we're going to have them with us this morning. Good to see you all. Glad to have you online with us this morning. Um, man, is it warm in here? Sure is hot up here. I, uh, I know I normally wear a white shirt, but I don't have time to change this morning. And Denny says I'll never change anyway, so <laughs> I'll stay like this for today. Wow. Behave yourself. We're talking about that this morning, behaving ourselves. Did your mom ever tell you that? Behave yourself. It's like, I need a baseline, mom. <laughs> I need a baseline. It was a long, long time ago, and I was with, I was with a, a, a friend on his ranch one day, and his, uh, he had his grandchildren uh, there visiting him. They were out playing. And, uh, and like kids do, two boys, right? Everything became a weapon. And soon the fight was on. And uh, it got out of hand. And I, I really didn't give it a lot of mind. You know, I was kind of ignoring it. You been there? You know, you're at, you're at somebody's house and there's a war going on over there. You just kind of, you know, and, and keep on. I, I wasn't paying much attention to it. Um, when all of a sudden my friend, he just stopped talking. And he, and he turned around and he called the boys over to him. And, uh, and it was really cool. He called the boys over and he knelt down to them. And he put a hand, one on each shoulder. And, uh, and he quietly said, boys, we do not tolerate bad behavior on this ranch. Do you understand me? And both of them kind of looked down at their boots, you know, and looked back up and, and, uh, and answered, yes. Yes, we do. They both nodded, and, he, and, he, and from that kneeling position, he, he just grabbed them in, gave them both a hug, and thank you, I would appreciate that. Gave them both a hug, and then, and then turned them loose again. And he spun right back, back around and took off where the conversation was before all this took place. He turned around and I said, George. I said, um, I really appreciate that. You know, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even know, I wasn't even aware of what was happening out there, what was going on out there. I was, I was talking to you, right? And, and I didn't realize that what I was doing is just what you were speaking against to them. I was tolerating bad behavior. I was letting it go on. Have you ever found yourself there? Come on, man, this is a common thread that runs through people, man. We just, we let stuff go. When I look at our world today as, as a whole, I kind of see the same thing going on in this playground of life that we're in. And somehow we've come to the point that we tolerate to a great extent bad behavior. We've come to a place where we just, we tolerate it. We expect it. When we hear words that we shouldn't be hearing. When we see things that we shouldn't be seeing. We, we tolerate it. We let it go. It must be somebody else's issue. And there's something about tolerating someone else's behavior in us. And, and, and I think that, that when we do that, we release ourselves from the responsibility of having to behave ourselves in the moment. If I give grace in that area, then maybe I'm expecting grace when I am of bad behavior, when I'm excused. God does not tolerate bad behavior. Amen. 
And he wants to teach us this morning that we don't either. We don't either. My friend was right. Not only could, could bad behavior compromise the integrity of his ranch, not only could it compromise the integrity of his ranch, our home, right? Our ranch, our home, our nine yards. But it also compromises our witness and our testimony for Jesus Christ. See, we're not witnessing to Jesus when we allow those things to take place. We've got people visiting and our kids are in the yard. I did it! And, and we ignore it because we've got visitors here. And we ignore it until it gets out of hand. And then what often happens is, would you kids knock it off over there? We're crying out loud, we're trying to visit in here. What's wrong with you? Behave yourselves. And, and what gets taught in that moment? That was a teaching moment. What got taught? Push it, man. Push it to the limit. And what's really going to happen is a stern word and a turnaround, they'll be back to visiting, the war can rage on. Wow, Pastor, it's quiet in here early this morning. Yes, it is. Whew. I want to read a scripture this morning out of Titus, book of Titus, chapter 2. I want to begin at verse 1. We're going to read a series here. For he admon the apostle admonishes, but as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. That they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded, in all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. Those good works that he says in here, I looked that up, those good works mean beautiful toil by effort. Good works. Beautiful toil by effort. Showing yourself to be a pattern of beautiful toil by effort. In doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say to you. And exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine God our Savior in all things. Pretty heavy, isn't it? It shows us something about how we as Christians are supposed to behave, how we're to live in this world as men, women, teachers, how we're to preach sound doctrine, how we're to live as ministers, answerable to God our Father about the way that we conduct our lives as His children. We are the children of God. What do we think Father God thinks when there's... when war breaks out on the playground with His children? What do we think about? Paul starts right off with ministers when he tells them when he tells Titus, you got to teach proud, proud, you got to teach sound doctrine. Titus, 
You've got to keep it on the level. You've got to teach sound doctrine. That word sound means healthy and wholesome. You've got to teach healthy, wholesome doctrine. When you open your mouth in front of all these people, it's got to be righteous word that comes forth. He said, don't teach your opinion. Don't teach the, late, the latest fad. Don't teach uh, the news story of the day. Teach the Word of God. Don't take anything away from it. And don't put anything into it. The Word of God is sufficient. You know, when I, when I became a Christian, I challenged the man that was teaching us, and I said, yeah, I don't see anything in here about dealing with, your, with a neighbor who doesn't want to fix fence. He says, oh, you don't, do you? This Word of God is applicable to anything that takes place in our lives. And if we want to instruct our children, grow our children, grow those younger than us in Christ, then we've got to stick to God's pattern. We've got to stick to His Word and His Word only, not your opinion, but His Word. And that's scriptural truth. 1 Timothy 4, 6 says, If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. He says, if you'll preach a good word, if you'll teach a good word, if you'll teach your grandkids a good word, you'll find yourself in that good word. You'll be reminding yourself as you teach. He goes on in verse 16 to say, Take heed... Oh, excuse me. I was singing some tenor stuff. It wasn't good for me. <laughs> Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue on, in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Both yourself and those who hear you. Well, don't you think Timothy was saved? Well, what's this talking about? It's talking about his behavior. He's talking about his behavior. You're going to have to be reminded. From there, from there Paul jumps right to the older men. And, and he says, they should be sober. They should be reverent. That doesn't mean they're not drunkards. They've they got to be quiet-minded, sober-minded. They've got to be, they got to be sober. He said, uh, 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 sound in faith, sound in love, sound in patience. And, and he's talking about Older men living out lives of purpose and seriousness as teachers of the way of the Lord. Older men, you know who you are. <laughs> We're supposed to be that. We're supposed to be that. Older men who, who don't take life flippantly, who are serious-minded. Men who aren't shallow and uncommended, but sober, diligent. Men who can be looked up to. We receive a warning in 1 Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and be watchful in your prayers. And it's putting Philippians, Philippians 3, 14 to work. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark, the goal. The prize. I'm working towards something here. I'm pressing on the high calling of, of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm, I'm working towards something. And if I'm going to work toward God, I've got to be looking at God. If I'm walking toward God, I've got to be looking at God. If I, if I walk like this, I'm going to miss Him, right? So I've got to be watchful, mindful of my God as I seek to follow Him. From there, from there, Paul jumps right in, right into um, the the girls. Where am I? I'm totally lost. <sighs> Whew. Anyway, Paul desires to see older men growing in their faith, not just we've arrived but men who are willing to go on to grow 
Men who recognize and live by Hebrews 11.6 without faith, faith, it's impossible to please him. If I look at the older men here today, is that who we are? Think about it. Is that who you are? Who he's talking about? And Paul doesn't leave out the older women either. Here we go. How are they to live? Because it's not just the guys that are getting talked about here. He talks about the women. Paul says older women are to be reverent, not slanderers. That's a big word. Not to be slanderers. Not given to much wine. Teachers of good things. He's talking about older women who live such godly lives that they teach by example wherever they are. Whether they're getting their hair done down at the boutique, getting their nails done, whether they're in line at Safeway, talking to their own children, talking to their neighbor's children, that they live by example their lives to Christ. They're to teach the younger women how to love their husbands, how to love their children. You know, I didn't know that you needed to know stuff when you had kids. Do you see? We got to realize this stuff needs to be taught. It needs to be taught, and we're not teaching. We're teaching the Word of God, but who's taking these young girls and sitting them down again? Listen, let me share some things with you. Because it's not the rose garden you think it is. There's some thorns in there. I'm going to tell you about them. So you can watch out for them. Wherever they are, they teach. Proverbs 31.27 talks about the virtuous wife, yeah? She watches over the ways of her household and doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Wow, pastor. The Amplified says she looks well to how things go in her household. How's it going? I had a grandma like that. I had, she had eyes <laughs> in the back. And she knew everything that was going on in her home, in her front room, in the back room, out in front. She knew where all the kids were. I don't know how she did it. She was watchful. She was mindful. She was matriarch. And she was good. She looks how well things go in her household and the bread of, of idleness, gossip, discontent, and self-pity. She will not eat. Wow. And how are the younger women to live? Because they ain't left out either. Young girls, how are they to live? They're to live in such a way that their elders have taught. I feel like maybe I should take some of you young girls aside and ask you what have they been teaching you. <laughs> They're to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient, that the Word of God may not be blasphemed. That someone does not look at you and say, I thought you were a Christian. Well, what's this I see? I thought you were a child of God. This child of God thing. What, what, am I, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? The young women are to learn, learn a phileo love. To learn a phileo love. A love of tenderness. A love of, of care and warmth from the older women. We're to learn from the experience that's gone before us. Do grandmas, I mean, there's grandmas in here. Do you pull your grandchildren aside and, and have a moment of teaching with them once in a while? I mean, you don't hammer them. You don't have to hammer them with stuff. But do you just pull them aside sometimes and, 
you know, maybe have a little girl afternoon and we're just going to chat and talk about some God stuff. Do you ever do that? Because you're responsible to do that. It is a responsibility in Christ, not an option. Matthew Henry says that young mothers, listen to this, young mothers are to love their children not with a natural affection only, but a spiritual, a love springing from a holy, sanctified heart and regulated by the word. Not a fond, foolish love, indulging them in evil, not tolerating bad behavior, right? Not neglecting due reproof and correction where necessary, but a regular Christian-like love showing itself in their pious education, forming their life and manners aright, taking care of their souls as well as of their bodies, of their spiritual welfare as well as their temporal welfare. Pastor, this is heavy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And we don't come here very often. And to be quite honest with you, I hesitate bringing a message that, that, that is carrying the weight this is. Because I know it is. And when I'm done, you're going to know that I know that it is. Seriously, Paul says that the older women are to teach things to the younger. These things are handed down generation to generation to generation. And, and in these last, I don't know, several generations, we've, we've lost this capacity of teaching. And, and generations have lost because they, they have not they have not only not gleaned from the older, but the older has not presented in a palatable way the truths and righteousness of God. Well, that just got heavier. But listen, the principles of God are not caught out there in a little butterfly net. and Our children just aren't going to skip along with a net and, and find all all these truths they've got to be taught and they've got to come from people whose hearts are to serve God and to see those whom they are growing serve God as well wow remember what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 5 when I call to remembrance in you Timothy the faith the faith that dwelt first in grandmother Lois and in your Next generation, mother, I'm all so persuaded, is in you, your generation. You see, he saw that being handed down. And we can look at our families today and wonder, have I appropriately handed down any of the knowledge of Christ, any of the experience of God that I have in me, have I brought that down to my children? Because my children should stand taller than I do. They shouldn't have to go through so many of the failures and the misconceptions and the issues that I've gone through. Yes, they're going to go through those things, but they shouldn't have to go through the things that I've gone through without foreknowledge of them. Wow. Young women are to be chased, not by boys. <laughs> Young women are to be chaste. What is that? It's being pure, morally, and sexually, and in thought, and in action. And where do you suppose they're going to learn all that? Certainly not in a magazine. I assure you they're not going to learn that in school. So if it isn't taught, how is it going to be caught? It must be taught and modeled within the home. Again, generation to generation to generation. As we so often 
it seems to me like, like, like I was so often trying to catch up. Why does my household not look like Grandpa's household? How did he do this? How did he, you know? Why did I not talk to him about that? Why did he not talk to me about that? And all of a sudden, he's asleep in his chair forever. All of it, all of it lost to me. I got some of it, but I don't get it all. And at the same time, valuing Grandpa, thinking Dad knows nothing. Where do we get that? Where did I ever get that concept? When I was 14, my dad, my dad was like, I don't know, didn't know anything. It's amazing how much he grew intellectually in seven years. <laughs> I was proud of him. I believe it's something God designed for all of us this morning to know because Paul speaks to the older women, the older men, the younger men, I mean the younger women, and he doesn't leave out the young guys either. He says that we, the older guys, we're to teach the younger guys. We're supposed to exhort them. We're supposed to lift them up. We're supposed to encourage them. When we see the weight of life on their shoulders, we're not, we're not supposed to come to them with, well, the trouble with you is, we're supposed to come alongside them in grace, in mercy, compassion, and share the richness of the Word of God with them in the midst of their trial, in the midst of their issue. Teach those younger guys to be sober-minded, to have a pattern of good work. in their lives. Show them. Teach them. What's it look like? That pattern of good work. To have reverence, integrity, incorruptibility. People, if there's so many Christians in the world, why is there so much trouble with our young people? Why is there no integrity? Has integrity not been taught? Why is there no patience and peace? Has patience and peace not been taught? Why is there holiness? Has holiness been left out? What have we left out? Because something been left out. The evidence shows itself. And it's the parents' job. It's the parents' job to see that this takes place. Some parents nail it, others don't. It's all right. We're going to go from here. We're going to learn from here. Sober-minded, good works, have reverence. Young men, and young men of integrity. Your word is your bond. I was a young man. i just share the story. As a young man, I saw my grandfather at the bar. That was, that was a social aspect of life at the bar. A man who could remember phone numbers, who could remember figures, sat at a bar and made a deal on five loads of cattle, shook a hand, he was to receive them on a certain date, I think it was like three months later, and saw him three months later take a, take a financial bath on the deal that he shook hands with. He didn't back out of it. He didn't change his mind. He didn't squirm around. I said what I said. It's done. He was a man of integrity. What he said he would do. When he said he's going to spank you, he spanked you. <laughs> Truth foretold. But I saw him again and again witness such integrity in his life. In deals like that, that wasn't the only one. Saw my father make a lot of money on the same kind of deal and give some of it back. What's up with that? What's up with that? 
I took those, I took those things into my life when, when, when managing a ranch. We sold cattle and we sold them for, for big, big money. And on the time that they were to be received, I did not hold the buyer to that figure. He had no idea what I was talking about. Nobody had ever done such a thing. I said, no, 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 I, 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 can't, I can't do that to you. Let's back this thing down. We'll take a little less. We'll take a little less and make it work for both of us. Yeah. Where did that come from? I didn't catch that in school. I didn't catch that with a butterfly net running around the barn. I caught that because it was handed down to me, generation to generation to generation. So when I see misbehavior, generations below me, I've got to wonder, what was my issue, what was my involvement in the lack of? Did I not do what I was supposed to do? And it's tough when you swallow hard and you realize that, yeah, man, you messed up. You were not the grandfather you were supposed to be. You were not the husband you were supposed to be. You were not the, the uncle you were supposed to be. That yeah, goes down a little hard. But it's truth nonetheless. And we go from there. We don't allow ourselves to be condemned by those things, but we see them, we recognize them for what they are, and we, and we go on. That's what today is all about. I mean, it, this is, this is a, a message that should, should spur us on in our lives with our families. Teaching young men to stay focused, wow. We are directed to pass that on. It is not an option and we can miss it. That's why we're reminded of it this morning. Paul even talks about the working man in the scripture. He said if you're a working man, if you're hired by someone, teach them. Huh? He said if you're hired by them, teach them. Encourage them. Encourage your master, the guy who's writing your paycheck. Show them your obedience to Christ in all things. Even in serving them, no talking back, no stealing, arrive a little late for work, take an extra 15 minutes for lunch, maybe leave a little earlier in the afternoon. No, no. But honor him in your time and learn to do all that you do as unto the Lord. He's a hard master, man. He expects me here at five till opening and, and five minutes after closing. And well, then stay ten. Come ten. Impress him. Yeah, he doesn't even leave the working man out. Servants. Servants. Ephesians 6 5 in the Message Bible says Servants. Respectfully obey your earthly masters, but always with an eye to obeying the real master, Christ. Don't just do what you have to do to get by, but work heartily as Christ's servants doing what God wants you to do. And work with a smile on your face. Always keeping in mind that no matter who happens to be giving the orders, you're really serving God. Good work will get you good pay from the master, regardless of whether you are slave or free. Many of you here today, you're in business. And what I hear from the business owners of today is I can't find good help. I can't find anyone that wants to go anywhere near the hundred percent limit. I find people, young people that graduate high school and they want to be the CEO. What, nobody wants to mop the kitchen? No. No. 
And, and that, that is, that it, we got to take that on ourselves, people. Some of those kids are our kids that are acting this way, that are talking this way, that, that won't give themselves, that, that, that look, look for, for everything to be given to them and nothing worked for, nothing strived for. Friends, we got to take that on ourselves. We got to take it on ourselves. If you have or if you haven't. But not with condemnation to move on. What about this afternoon? What about tomorrow? What am I going to look like tomorrow? And am, am I going to be that older man who teaches? Or am I not? Am I going to be the younger woman who, who, who learns? The younger man who learns? Maybe so. Maybe not. But I've got an opportunity to change the pattern that I'm in. We have opportunities to change the patterns that we might be in. You might be in a perfect, wonderful pattern today. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love it. By the way, when I say hallelujah, it means what? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah means all praise Yah. So when I say hallelujah, I'm saying, hey, let's all give God a praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Squirrel, I know. We're all teachers, friends, and we're all teaching. I don't care how old you are in this room today. We're all teachers, amen? We're all being watched. Young people, your mother does have eyes behind her head. You can't see them, but they're there. They know when you've been good. I know the Lord put my me this message on my heart today for a reason, and, and I couldn't shake it, and I didn't want to give it. Here at Country Cowboy Church, we, have, we happen to have older men and older women. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've also got younger men and younger women. We've also got children. They're all here. So, so there should be, in the, in the spiritual atmosphere of our lives, there should be an exchange going on. A flowing, a flowing of, 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 of godness. As, as we intermingle, as we, as we fellowship, as we rub against each other, as we, we, we talk and communicate, as we have, have our being together. There should be communication going on. I believe the Lord wants us to recognize this morning that we're never too old, never too old to instruct, and never too young to be instructed. Generation to generation. When the children look up to the olders of this church, what do they see? When these, when these young ones, when these children look up at you, in the foyer, in the parking lot, maybe downtown at Subway. When these children look at you, what are they seeing? What are they seeing in our speech, in our presentation? Do they see stability, faithfulness, integrity, honesty, mercy, compassion, the love of God? What examples do we here lay down? I'm talking about kids too, youngsters too, young and old. What are we laying down? Are we cutting corners? Or are we, um, maybe I don't want to go to church, so mom and dad's in there, I'm going to run around the corner, and I'll be over here. Some, you know, what, what, are we, what are we showing one another? What are we showing one another as, as parents, as, as grandparents? What examples do we lay down? Do you realize that there is only one man 
in this entire congregation. I know you're listening to me online. I don't know who you are, but there's only one man in this congregation that teaches in the classrooms downstairs. One. 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 That's disappointing. Because I know the reservoir of knowledge that is sitting in this room. And I know a bunch of little reservoirs that need to be filled. The girls, the women, God bless you ladies, but you teach love, not respect. And, and men teach respect. It's my own humble opinion. Because we're about respect. We're not the cushy love thing. I know sometimes, even in worship songs, it's hard to get cushy. But our young people need to learn respect. They need to, to know that men, men, men teach as well. They don't just leave in the morning, go to work and come home and, and watch TV. They are teachers also. Whew. Man, this is really meddling. I think it's such a shame because I know what's out there. The, the, our men have so much to offer and these kids are missing out if, if we don't pour it in them. And we're missing out too. These guys are fun. We have a mutton buster here that is loads of fun. Our kids are fun. You're missing out on some of the stuff they say down there, man. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6. We're going to close. 6, verse 5. Says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your what? And all your? And all your? Man, that's huge, isn't it? That's talking about giving it all, isn't it? That, that, we can skip right over those words and not even know we read them. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. One of our greatest responsibilities as parents, grandparents, even young men, unmarried men, married men, is to teach our children the ways of the Lord. And we're told it's not magic. It's not magic. It's done deliberately throughout the day when we're sitting, when we're walking, when we're lying down, when we're rising up. It is a pattern. A pattern of our households that should reflect Christ in us, Christ in our home. I started out, I started out this morning talking about behaving ourselves, right? I don't think I strayed too far from that title. But how can we ask our children to behave themselves in a godly manner if we ourselves do not? Because they watch. They see our lives. They know what we look like. They know what we get mad at. They know what we cuss at. They know what all of our lives they know. So how can we ask them to walk a godly life 
if we ourselves are not walking that walk. How can we ask our children to behave themselves in a godly manner if they have absolutely no idea what a godly manner might look like? What's that supposed to look like, Dad? What example am I supposed to follow? What's been laid down before me? How much of our own lives, listen, how much of our own lives have we really given to Christ? That's a question that we need to reflect within ourselves. How much of my life have I really given to Christ? Because whatever amount that is shows in my life. And whatever I lack in spiritual integrity, whatever I might lack in, in, in honesty and righteousness shows in my life. And let's not fool ourselves into thinking we're someone we're not. We are who we are. we deal with God. We take our lives before Him. Are we living in such a way that not only our children, but, but those around us are going to be drawn to God? Or are going to reject God because of the pattern that they see in our lives? The misbehavior that they see in our lives. See, my friend was right. Not only can our bad behavior compromise the integrity of the ranch, not only can bad behavior compromise the integrity of your home, your, your nine yards, whatever that might be, not only will it, will it compromise that, it can also compromise the kingdom of God. Because we are a part of that kingdom. It can compromise the kingdom. It can compromise our witness. It can compromise our testimony for the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It can? Yes, it can. the church we get that right but as a body of believers we ought to be able to tell one another exhibit to one another show one another that we do not tolerate bad behavior on this ranch we don't want to compromise our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. You had enough yet? Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, may we in our words, in our actions, always seek to bring honor to you. May we not only teach what we know of you, but Father, may we in our daily walk exhibit your presence in our lives. May we all, young, old, otherwise, May we all continue to grow in your knowledge and, 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 and learn, Father, to pass that knowledge down. Pay it forward. Generation to generation to generation. And if it hasn't started, Father, it would... 
Allow it to start today. Allow today to be a new day in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, Lord. Give us eyes, give us eyes for our family. Give us eyes for our family. Give us good words, encouraging words. Words that, that build and, and edify and strengthen, Lord God. Lord, we're, we're old and yet we're still adding to our foundation. Help us in these things. Teach us, Lord, that, that we may bring the reality of your word to those around us. To lead them in your ways. There's someone here this morning that that is admitting in your heart. And Lord, I've I've fallen short. Well, listen, we all fall short of the glory of God. I'm saying in your heart this morning that that I have failed my family. I want you to not let such condemnation come into your heart. Because you know things now that you didn't know then. If that's you this morning, I want to encourage you that today, this hour, what is it? It's two minutes to twelve. Right now, this moment is a brand new moment. A time that you can give consideration to a new direction. In your heart, in your family. Take that with you. Don't let, don't let the demonics drive you down. Look them in the eyeball and say, But God, but God, but God. And allow God to create the changes in your life that you desire. We can't do those things on our own. That's why He gave us Holy Spirit to live within us, direct us and guide us and teach us so that we might direct and guide each other. So, Father, we give you thanks for all these things, Lord God, and ask that your mercies flow in every heart this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Turn around, give somebody some sugar before you get out of this house. Let them know you do love them, amen. Bless you.